It's been shown to reduce cold symptoms in children as well as the elderly. Hi friends, someone sent to me this other short that says, reminder, healthy food can be yummy too. So let's watch that. Okay, so that is a papaya. It looks like to me a Mexican papaya. I love papayas. You know, when I went to Hawaii, I was looking for papayas because Hawaiian papayas are my all time favorite. Look at that beta carotene, right? That orange color means it's rich in beta carotene and lycopene and probably zeaxanthin as well. So I went to the farmer's market to find the juiciest, healthiest papaya. Hi folks, I'm here in Honolulu, Hawaii. How do you think people live so long in Hawaii? Uh, I think the secret to why people live so long in Hawaii is the Hawaiian papayas. Really? Yeah, plenty of the uh, aunties and uncles, that's what we call the folks who are older than you, uh, they come by one every single day. Most of them, they live like 70, 80 plus. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Here, yeah. They live a wow. long, long time. Specifically for the papayas. If you come ask them, they'll tell you the same thing. It's just one Hawaiian papaya every single day. One in the morning. That's oh, it. Oh wow. Okay, I gotta get myself some Hawaiian papayas. Yeah, yeah. So how do you pick them? Like, how do you know which one is sweet? Can you, can you show uh, me? Yeah, okay. So for the papayas, they start out like this, green. Uh -huh. And then they'll slowly change color to yellow. Okay. But uh, even when they're yellow, the, the way that you tell is by like you give them like a little slight squeeze, uh -huh. kind of like a mango. When they soften up just a little bit, okay. then that's when you know they're ready to eat. They mostly go for like the yellow, but sometimes they come like for the week, right? They just come shopping for the week. So they'll pick some green ones so they can have some riper ones later on in the week. Some even get more like 15 or... <laughs> 20 oh, wow. papayas yeah because you know people have big families so you got to share all the papayas so now that i'm back i'm always trying to eat papaya right my husband loves papaya so this is a treat that you know we just love to eat my kids though they're not quite into this fruit so i still have to figure out how to get them to eat it but i love eating papaya this is really weird i i literally just cut open this papaya and i saw this little like baby papaya in it and, um, you know, I took out the other one and it literally is a baby papaya. Look at that with the skin and all. So I've never seen this like a papaya and a papaya. Okay. Kiwi. Now, did you know that you can actually eat the skin of a kiwi? I know a lot of people don't like to do that, but it's actually edible and I'll just eat the whole kiwi, but kiwis are excellent. They have more vitamin C than oranges. In fact, two oranges makes the vitamin C level of one kiwi. It's been shown to reduce cold symptoms in children as well as the elderly. So I try to buy kiwi every week for my kids. Okay, so bananas. Now, I have mixed feelings about bananas. I love bananas, but I try not to eat them with my other foods anymore because they actually have enzymes that degrade the polyphenols out of other fruits. I'm sorry to be the party pooper because I know everybody loves bananas. They add bananas to everything. I think it's a number one fruit in America, even though we don't really grow it. My parents used to have a banana tree. Look up here, that's a banana. And these are banana trees. My mom used to grow bananas in California. But I'm just walking down the neighborhood and here's a banana tree here and here's another banana tree. You can see that it's growing. It's like a, I think it's called a hand of bananas, right? When you take, when you cut a group of them, it's called a hand and each banana is called the finger. And fresh bananas, I don't know, they don't taste any different to me than store-bought bananas. So bananas are one of those things that, you know, I can buy from the store or I can, you know, get from a tree and it doesn't make any difference to me. Once a banana turns like this, this is not a banana texture that I like. It's mushy, it's super sweet, it's alcohol tasty. Cause this is a fermented banana. And at this point, it's lost its texture and its taste, but it's also toxic to bake with this. There's an alcohol in it called ethanol. Alcohols in general are all diuretics. So it actually makes people more dehydrated. So if you're wondering why you're getting more urinary tract infections, could it be because you have alcohol in your diet, whether it's from a banana or drinking wine? In general, fermented foods all have a little bit of alcohol. 
And of course, a little bit is not like a lot, but when you get to a certain threshold, your alcohol can cause headaches, dizziness, and fatigue. And this is because no amount of alcohol is safe for your brain. When you drink alcohol or eat alcohol, it immediately goes through your stomach to be absorbed from your stomach and your small intestine into your bloodstream. Then that travels to your liver and your liver, it needs to have an enzyme called alcohol dehydrogenase to begin to detoxify the ethanol alcohol. Unfortunately, it turns it into a more toxic metabolite called acetylaldehyde, which actually increases the body's inflammation and oxidative stress that can lead to fatty liver, more liver damage like cirrhosis, ultimately inhibition of gluconeogenesis, and it increases the risk of liver cancer. So I never eat over-ripened fruits of any kind. As soon as it smells alcoholy, I throw that away. I love freezing them and I'll eat them by myself, but I try not to eat it when I'm trying to get the phytonutrients from the other fruits. Huh, I don't know what that cream is. It's probably yogurt. I don't eat yogurt. I'm lactose intolerant. I don't think it's healthy enough for, for me to go take a lactate to eat. So I just don't eat it, but I can imagine it would taste good with it. Okay, those blueberries are excellent. You know, I would actually pile on the blueberries and I did that. And that's actually how I ate one of the papayas in Hawaii. I basically went to Costco and bought a bunch of blueberries and I put it with my papaya and scooped it out and ate it. So I try to eat high fiber foods, rich in hydration, phytochemicals, proteins, as well as low in saturated fat and added sugar and salt. And this is a foundation of how I created this berry tart and berry souffle. Now, even though they look like two very different foods, they come from one basic recipe. So both of these foods can nourish your tummy with antioxidant rich proteins, as well as fiber. It was delicious. Oh, I think those are chia seeds. Excellent for bowel movements. That's how I potty trained my kids is with chia seeds. Now, if you're constipated, eating chia seeds dehydrated is not a good idea because that'll just compact your stool more, right? You want to eat it prehydrated. You want that slimy mucoid gel to come out and then drink it with water. So here is why it's important to seek soluble fiber. The sliminess and gel is key to health. I have here some chia seeds that are mixed in water. And let me show you what happens close up to this chia seed. This is actually my secret weapon is chia seeds. Notice how it's floating in water and some of it is stuck to the glass. Well, this is soluble fiber. I'm gonna take this globe that represents cholesterol, which is a tip, round tip, and then, well, actually the bile is this stem. So the cholesterol is trapped on the stem of the bile. So this is what is really happening in your gut. Your liver converts cholesterol into bile, and when you eat, the bile goes down your intestines to be excreted out. But if you don't poop or have a bowel movement, then the cholesterol gets recycled, and then that adds to the overall elevated cholesterol in your bloodstream, as well as your liver. And this is why it's important to seek soluble fiber because the soluble fiber, the sliminess in the gel is what helps us have a bowel movement. It's so slimy that it's hard to keep your stool in. This is actually my secret weapon for pooping. I literally potty train my toddler feeding him chia seeds. I'm gonna put this clove now inside here, okay? All right, let's see if the chia seeds get stuck. The chia seed has now encased uh, my clove, right? And, and what that happens is it's preventing my body from reabsorbing the cholesterol. If, you know, we represented the uh, chia seeds or the clove tip as cholesterol, see how it's kind of stuck to it, right? It's viscous. And that's the purpose of soluble fiber. Oh, that's, I don't know what that is. I would assume it's honey. Maybe it looks like oil. I'm actually not sure. But either way, I would skip that because that's a form of processed food. And if you eat the fruit, it's already sweet enough. If you buy good quality sweet fruit, you really don't need to add any syrup or honey to that, right? Eating it in its whole food form is the way to go. Because when you eat it in a whole food form, it protects your metabolism. When you're eating syrup, 
you know, a little bit is no big deal, right? So like if she eats that little bit in a day, it's no big deal. It's really when we start massively eating a ton of syrup, whether it's agave or honey or maple syrup, all that is just a form of sugar. Now, if you aren't a fan of high fructose corn syrup, then agave is not for you. Number nine is honey, an ancient syrup processed by bees. Now, most of this honey is fructose, then it's glucose, and thus honey tastes 25% sweeter than sugar. Now, I know there are plenty of health claims about honey, including relieving constipation. And I think I explained why that could happen prior, right? It's because it's high in fructose, which is poorly absorbed and can promote a laxative effect. There are much better ways to relieve constipation. Try some prunes. Now, if you have allergies, there really is no sound evidence eating local honey helps. You may have used it to soothe your sore throat, but unfortunately, it doesn't improve the overall symptom frequency or severity of common colds. Now, I do like Manuka honey for wound care, especially because honey has natural antimicrobial properties. Now, a few years ago, we visited a local park that was giving a show and tell about bees and honey, and the tour guide said, honey never expires. Now, what does that really mean? When I think of expiration, I think of spoilage and infectious diseases. And it is well known that honey contains botulism toxin, basically little bacteria spores that can cause paralysis in infants. So children Children under one should never eat any forms of honey. Now, number 10 is allulose. And you train your palate to like that sugar. I've trained my palate to just eat whole food, whole fruit. And so now when I eat this, it satisfies my palate without me having to add, you know, like artificial sweeteners or not nutritive sweeteners or sugar substitutes, whether it's brown sugar, maple syrup, honey, agave, you know, stevia, etc. I just don't think of those things as food. Now, people generally look for sugar substitutes to lose weight and control their blood sugars. But aspartame has been shown to increase body fat, increase weight gain, and obesity when consumed in large amounts, which is equivalent to drinking half a can of Diet Coke every day. Now, if you regularly drink at least half a can of Diet Coke daily, you will have more visceral fat than those who consume little aspartame over several years. Aspartame has been linked to tinnitus, hearing loss, migraines, and movement disorders. They're really not food. They could be a part of like seasonings and condiments, but you know, the more condiments you eat, sometimes we're basically eating the condiment and then you know, dipping it to eat the condiment, right? That's kind of how I used to eat ketchup. And I basically wanted to eat ketchup, so I would dip things in it to eat the ketchup. And if you've ever read the back of an ingredient of a ketchup, you know it's like not healthy for you, right? I think the first ingredient or the second ingredient is sugar, no matter how organic that ketchup is. So I'm a big fan of eating food in its whole food form. And the more you eat it in its whole food natural state, the more your palate changes and then you don't need the condiments to eat your food and enjoy it. And if you want to learn more tips about what fruit can do for your cholesterol, watch the next video.